Kemijo Terma and Shokuho Misaki have a heartbreaking history that even Terma himself is unaware of in season 3 of A Certain Scientific Railgun. But why did Terma forget about one of Academy City's strongest espers? Especially one that looks like that. And what exactly is Misaki's relationship with Terma, considering she calls him her prince? Maybe she's just one of Terma's many simps. Not that I can blame her. Their backstory is a tragic one. So grab your boxes of tissues you would normally use for doujins and prepare for a summary of New Testament 11, the volume which reveals all. Misaki is munching on a nice burger when she fantasizes about her past, staring at the intersection where she met him. One year before the start of the Index timeline, they bumped into each other randomly as Toma is strangely in a rush and loses his phone as Misaki picks it up. This may sound like filler, but it's pretty important for later on, so don't forget it. Also, this means that Misaki has known Toma longer than both Misaka and Index. I'm sure the Misaka fanboys are delighted at this news. Fast forward a bit and Misaki is at Ground Geo, a geothermal power station with an artificial lake, and is about to erase her memories with Mental Out, the most powerful mind-related ability amongst espers. Not only can she control other people's minds with this ability, but she can also erase memories, and she's pointing the remote control she uses to target people with this ability directly at her own head. Basically trying to commit mental suicide by resetting everything in her head. In this flashback, Misaki was suffering from crippling depression after losing her friend Dolly as a result of experiments from Academy City scientists and being manipulated by them herself. But have no fear, cause Toman is here who could see up Misaki's skirt like a true Sigma male. She then reacted appropriately by using her power to try and erase Terma's memories of that, but he was able to say LOL NO by touching his head with his right hand, nullifying mental out with the ability known as Imagine Breaker. Misaki then has more flashbacks than the entirety of Naruto, with her and Terma in a flooded underground shopping mall, Terma using his senpai Kumakara Seria's teachings to try and test hypnotism on Misaki, and then saving her from getting attacked by a flock of pigeons, and handing her a silver whistle to blow if she needs help. Misaki then started to fall in love with Terma, like 90% of the female cast and the readers, but they were not all happy memories. Misaki was targeted by a dark side organization known as Deadlock, formed of around 30 espers who can't advance further in their development and blame the level 5s as scapegoats for it. They chased Misaki and Terma as they attempted to murder her equipped with a technology known as Queen Divers allowing them to move faster than 200 kilometers per hour. Mental Out was also ineffective, not just because of how fast they moved, but also because their bodies would be taken over by their suits if Misaki controlled them via Mental Out. The Queen Divers were surprised a level zero would choose to protect a level five and accused him of being controlled by Mental Out, but Terma called them out for their bullshit. Surrounded and outnumbered by Deadlock, Terma battled them to protect Misaki. You'll find out what happened at the end of this fight at the end of this video. Meanwhile, back to the present day as Misaki returns to Ground Geo, but strangely, it appears completely different to how she remembers it, leading her to believe that her memories concerning Terma may have been altered or ultimately fake. She is still in possession of the Silver Whistle, that one memento from Terma, but what if it was given to her by a third party? She attempts to extract the memories from a nearby object, and nothing happens, leading Misaki to panic as she begins a quest to discover the truth of her past, just like Shadow the Hedgehog. She decides to seek Kamakawa Seria, someone who knew Terma before his memory loss in the Index arc as his upperclassman at school, and someone who is an expert of manipulating minds without any power, Misaki believing that she may be the culprit. Arriving at Seria's headquarters, Misaki explains her situation, and Seria notes that Toma has lost his memories, so Misaki wouldn't even be able to verify if the memories are true by asking Toma directly. Misaki also states it couldn't be an Esper power playing tricks on her, as she is the strongest mental Esper, 
and so Seria believes it is likely the result of technology, which is known as Misaki's biggest weakness, as she is unable to control it, unlike the minds of humans. Her other biggest weakness being physical exercise. Seria then examines Misaki and then discovers a small device known as a strobilla implanted in her neck which potentially could have altered her memories. After leaving the HQ, Misaki was approached by multiple emergency aid workers, saying she had to go with them for trespassing. But Misaki figured out they were trying to deceive her in order to implant another strobilla in her neck. She used mental out to make the workers beat each other up at the touch of a button, and then interrogated the last man standing, as he explained the strobilla had no data on it, leading Misaki to conclude it was implanted within her to make her think that her memories had been tampered with, which might have prompted her to erase her memories of Toma. Due to the revelation that someone was trying to make Misaki erase her own memories of Toma, she then realized this did prove her past really did happen. Misaki then decided to head back to Ground Geo to find clues about why it had changed, with Seria communicating with Misaki, who discovered that even all online files and blueprints had been altered to match its current appearance, with nothing of the former sites remaining. Misaki arrived to find the scenery had been altered, with something akin to future military camouflage and suddenly what appeared to be a fat version of herself appeared who had been expecting misaki's arrival i guess this is what misaki and jabba the hutt's daughter would look like mental art was ineffective while the mysterious enemy attacked misaki using psychological attacks and hallucinations misaki retaliated by throwing her remotes at a large target gaining distance to remove a strobilla placed within the enemy, which might have given them immunity to mental out. Misaki believes she has the enemy controlled, to which they reveal, I am Shogaho Misaki. Just kidding. The enemy is in fact Mitsuari Ayu, a level 3 esper with the mental stinger ability, an inferior version of mental out, who was considered as a backup plan to Misaki by the scientists. Using a 5 over OS, Ayu was able to mask the environment around her using a special dust, which can also produce a variety of illusions. Ayu blames Misaki for all of her life's failures, for being cast aside and treated as disposable as she was not chosen to become a level 5 and that she cannot stand as being seen as inferior. Misaki argues that despite the fact Ayu wasn't treated the same as her and not given the same treatment, that doesn't mean she couldn't have been able to surpass even her as a level 5 by working hard or by other means. Just like how Toma proved to her that even a level 0 can outmatch a level 5 and Misaki criticizes Ayu for victimizing herself and turning to crime because of this. Ayu then uses Mental Stinger to interfere with Misaki's mental out, trapping Misaki within her mind, revealing that she too knew Toma in the past and wanted him to save her from committing suicide at Ground Geo one year ago. But Toma didn't answer his phone, causing her to go through with it, but as a failed attempt as she survived. But why did Toma not answer? Because he bumped into Misaki at their first meeting, remember? So that's yet another excuse for Ayu to hate Misaki. Talk about petty. Maybe if Toma was taking a shower and Ayu tried to call him, she would have taken her revenge on all showers in the world, joining the other Index villains with the most compelling character motivations of all time. Misaki then says, don't worry Ayu, I'm going to save you from this villain complex because that's exactly what Toma would do. Ayu then summons a different five over in the form of a robotic scorpion wasp and explains to her this one isn't complete as it functions to replicate Misaki's power. But Ayu needs Misaki inside the machine for her to copy the ability and if she can use mental out via this machine, she can erase all of Misaki's memories. Misaki's clique, however, helps hijack Ayu's control of the machine, handing it over to their queen, who uses it to attack Ayu, who defends herself with the octopus one. But Ayu manages to knock Misaki out. She wakes up inside the machine with Ayu connecting it to her. All hope seems lost as Misaki decides to blow the whistle Toma gave her as a last resort 
despite the fact Toma has no way in hell of coming, since he can't even remember the promise he made with her, and the fact he's probably nowhere near the site. I use Yandere instincts kick in as she strangles Misaki for the audacity to think that Toma would come to rescue her, when Ayu also hopelessly thought her hero would arrive. But guess what? Have no fear, Toe Man is here once again, straight out of the hospital from the previous volume. He stops Ayu, who is sent to jail. But how the hell did Toma hear that whistle? This is the most far-fetched plot device of all time. Index sucks. Nah, he didn't hear it. Seria just phoned him and told him where to go. It's that simple. Toma also doesn't recognize Misaki. Wait, that's weird. They interacted in Railgun T. Well, continuing on from the deadlock flashback, Toma got the shit beaten out of him, and in order to try and ease the pain, Misaki attempted to interfere with his brain. And that was the moment she fucked up. Due to his low blood pressure, the imbalance of the moisture in the brain, and Misaki's power interfering, it did irreversible damage on Toma's brain, so that he would be unable to form new memories of Misaki, forgetting her every time they meet. Misaki kisses Toma's forehead, knowing that he will forget about her once more once she leaves, and hopes one day for a miracle where the boy she loves remembers her once more. Meanwhile, the best doggo and member of the Kihara family, Kihara Noken, is ordered to assassinate a whale, Shundo Toshizo. And yeah, don't ask how he's a whale, I don't know. And yes, he's in a big ass aquarium versus a dog with hundreds of weapons on its back. This is why New Testament is nearly as absurd as Jojo. Alistair then orders Noken to prepare to fight the magic gods with the AAA or anti-art attachment, an arsenal of weapons specializing in killing immortal beings as New Testament 11 ends. If you'd like to see more index light novel summaries just like this, make sure you subscribe and check out these ones on screen right now if you missed them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.